My name is Betsy Smith, and I was diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer in September of 2014. It's been a long journey. I had a lot of problems with constipation my whole life, and finally it was one day where it was so painful and I couldn't go to the bathroom and I had hemorrhoids. And so I got Dr. Child's name through a friend and thought I was gonna have to have hemorrhoid surgery. She made time for me, met me at five o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon and she did an exam and she told me right there and then, I'm pretty sure you have rectal cancer and you're going to need to have a biopsy and you're probably gonna have to have chemo and surgery. Well, talk about life-changing moment. That was probably the scariest moment of my life. And I, I looked at her, I said, what are you talking about? And she was very real and she didn't silver cut it because she knew it was pretty advanced already and that we had to get the diagnosis um, identified and start treatment right away. Dr. Rudy Bedford um, did the biopsy that Friday morning. Uh, it came back right away as, as positive. And so my next steps were early the following week to meet with Sean Fisher, the most wonderful oncologist I know. Then I met with also Dr. Robert Wallman, who was my radiologist oncology. I started radiation a few days later and they wanted to start a week later and I went to Sean and I said, Sean, you told me I was starting tomorrow. He goes, you're right, because I didn't want to waste any time. And so they got me fitted. I started radiation for 30 days every day. And then we waited to see if the tumor shrunk, which it did. I had to have some chemo first for six weeks and then it shrunk more. And then I had my surgery in January, which was to remove the tumor and I had to have a temporary illinostomy bag for a year. I did really poorly with surgery and I was in the hospital 14 days, usually it's three to seven days, and I had major infections and just, I just don't do well with surgeries. And um, I didn't even wanna look at the bag, I was really, not okay with having the bag. I had the most wonderful nurse, stoma nurse in the world, Barbara Runya, who has been here for a really long time. I know she's since retired and she lives in Canada and we are still very close. But finally I went home and still really struggled with a lot of pain and infections and had to see infectious disease doctors and we had to get the infections under control before I could have my next round of chemo. And finally we did months later, and then I had my last round of chemo, which lasted months where I would go home with the bag as well. All throughout this, my team here was unbelievable. Anything I needed, they were available to me. And that doesn't happen anywhere. It's such a close knit, I think of it as a family. My doctors, Tracy Childs and Sean Fisher, saved my life. I just want to thank them always from the bottom of my heart. So as soon as I was feeling better, I, I talked to Tracy and I said, I know people don't have support and they need it. I had the best support in the world. Um, any love I ever gave came back a billion times over. People flew in from everywhere to help. My young daughter was eight during this. And there was one day in the hospital I think this is very important that I thought I was going to die. I felt that bad and I looked at the poster she made me and I was like, I'm not going anywhere. What really helped me get through this is I had a great attitude and I, every day, even though it was awful, I was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to do it. I was determined to be there for my child. And I think that's very important is to have a really good attitude and believe you're gonna beat this disease. One day I'm feeling better and I, Tracy called, she goes, okay, I finally have someone for you. There's this patient and she's in really bad shape and she had sepsis and she's in the hospital and 
she is not doing well mentally and you know physically can you talk to her and I said absolutely and I said okay do you want me to call her like when should I call her she goes no I want you to go see her and I said okay when would you like me to go see her she's like how about this afternoon so I dropped everything I can't remember what I was doing I went to see her I would visit her she was in the hospital for a week or two almost every day go on walks with her in the hospital talk to her and let her know she's not alone and talk to her husband and really gave them support and we really became close and then this happened with another patient as well who was a patient of Sean's and not only had cancer she had leukemia she had everything and she is a survivor so I helped her through the bag and the diagnosis of the the rectal cancer and we're really good friends now and it's such a bond that can never break but and doctors they can all tell you nurses they all know the medical part but they haven't been through it themselves so they don't know exactly what you're going through and the mental part so all I want to do is help others because I am so grateful I'm alive so gratifying to be done but I also felt a big void a big hole in my life because that was my job for two years and I had a purpose and I suddenly felt like I didn't have a purpose and so it was really hard getting back to normal life and I met this woman on a hike actually who I love the way she spoke and it just resonated with me and I asked her if she was a life coach and she was and I started seeing her and it really helped me set new goals and new intentions on what I wanted from my life at that point it's just a beautiful thing and during that couple years that I saw her it's also really made me want to be a life coach myself and focus on helping cancer patients to help others through this diagnosis it gives me a lot of peace and joy well I'm happy to say I am cancer free since 2017 so it's a miracle <laughs> and I thank God every day and I have gratitude every day for being here I had the best care in the world from Dr. Sean Fisher, Tracy Childs, and Barbara Runia, my, my stoma nurse. And I am still in contact with all of them, see them, you know, personally, and know if I need anything medically, they are there. And in turn, if they need anything from me, if they get a patient diagnosed, I'm the first one they call to help that patient if they're willing to talk to someone who's who's a survivor and who's been through this and that's the best gift in the world Tracy and I go out to dinner go hiking have mutual friends and um, I just was able to help Sean Fisher get his youngest daughter into a small Christian school that my daughter went to and so he wrote me and thanked me so much and I said it's the least I could do for you who saved my life. And so we, we have a great rapport and a great friendship. And I feel like they're my family. Number one is have a positive attitude. Believe you're gonna beat this because you will. Think of something you're grateful for every day. And one great piece of advice Dr. Childs gave me right in the beginning is do not go online and and research your diagnosis just don't do it because you're going to get so many different things and so many scary outcomes and treatments and and just focus on your your healing and your treatment with your team because they are there for you and they know what they're doing and that's really important and believe you're going to fight this